In this video I'm going to take a look at how you can install and then import the matplotlib library to be used in your code. The last video showed how we could download Python to our computer. If we have a look at what we get when we download and install Python, we will get the Python core language. Now this means that we will have access to all of the operators of the language, such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, all the logical operators such as AND, OR, and NOT. In addition, we will have access to all of the selection constructs that are used within the language, such as IF, and also all the iteration, or if you prefer, the repetition constructs, such as the FOR and the WHILE loop. In addition, the Python core language will have support for classes, objects, functions, lists, dictionaries, tuples, and so on. The normal things you would expect to see within the Python programming language. When Python is installed, as well as the core of the language, such as the operator, the selection, and the iteration constructs, libraries are also installed on the computer. And if we consider these libraries, we will know that we have tkinter that allows us to draw graphical user interfaces. We have the math library, which allows us to perform mathematical tasks, such as finding the cosine and so on. And we also have a time library that gives us facilities associated with time, such as telling us what today's date is, and so on. Now, what you can see in front of you is we have the Python core language, and we have these libraries, often called modules, that are also installed on our computer when we download and install Python. Now, if we wish to use any of the facilities offered by these libraries, we have to ensure that our Python code is told that. Told at the beginning of the program, look, I want you to use tkinter because I wish to draw a graphical user interface. I wish to produce an application that has a graphical user interface. And if we look at some code, you've seen this kind of thing in other playlists. You can see here that I have got import TK enter as TK. Now that's telling my code that I am going to be using the facilities offered by this library. And I'm going to have to use this TK here as a shortcut, allowing me to use TK instead of writing this out in full every time I wish to use some of the facilities offered by TK Inter. On this line, you can see I'm importing time as TM. Now that will allow me to use any of the facilities offered by this library or this module. Considering the code, you can see I have not imported this library because I don't wish to use it for the code I am going to be writing. So we have the core language and we have these facilities, but if I want to use any of them, you have to import as shown here. When we install Python, what we will get is the Python core language. And we've already seen we will also get some libraries, such as tkinter and time, often called modules. But if I wish now to use matplotlib, which is another powerful library that will draw visual representations such as graphs, you have to go out your way to download and install that. But if I consider it conceptually for a moment, Python core language will do quite a lot for us in terms of the code we wish to write, but if I now want visual representations, it's quite useful to be able to use matplotlib. So you have to, as I've already said, download it and install it. But what we will get, we will find that our language, our Python core language, will be extended and we will have a programming environment that has Python and matplotlib. So we now have a more powerful programming environment because we will 
have access to all of the facilities within matplotlib. Now, matplotlib itself will have dependencies. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means it will require some libraries in order for it to work. But we don't have to worry about that. What will happen is when you download and install matplotlib, the dependencies are automatically installed on your computer. And I'm going to show that there. So what we have is a richer environment now for us to write our code. So the question is, how do we install matplotlib? Well, we simply use a command as shown here. We go to the command prompt in Windows and you type in pip install matplotlib. Now what this will do, it'll go to the web, it'll locate where matplotlib is automatically for you. You do not have to worry about where it is. This command knows where it is. It goes and gets it. It brings it across the internet and it installs it on your computer. And once it's installed on your computer, you're able to use its facilities. Now, if you're using an Apple Mac, it's not the command prompt. It's the equivalent in the Mac. In other words, what I'm saying here, I don't do this from the editor, a Python editor. I go to the command prompt and I type in this command here. After this command has performed its functionality, you will have installed on your computer matplotlib. If we now consider the environment we now have after this is executed, we're going to see we have the Python core language, tkinter and math and time. But in addition, we're now going to have access to matplotlib. So now we've got this richer environment where I can use all of the modules that were automatically installed when we installed Python. And now using this pip install, I've now gained access to another library which will allow me to visually represent data. And that library I'm showing here in blue, matplotlib. Now, of course, what I have, I have an environment that allows me access to everything you can see here, time, math, tkinter, and matplotlib. Let's just say that I'm not interested in TK into math or time for the program I'm writing, but I am interested in plotting graphs. The very fact that I have the library matplotlib on my computer is not sufficient for me to be able to use it. In the same way as I had to import TK into and time and math if I wish to use it, I have to, at the beginning of my program, import math. Plot lib. So let's have a look at a computer program and you can see on this line that I'm importing matplotlib and I've got a full stop here using dot notation and pyplot as plt. Now what this is doing, it's allowing me access to the functionality that allows for the plotting of graphs that's part of matplotlib. And I'm referring to this here by this abbreviation PLT. In other words, what this line is doing is not using all the facilities of this library. It is just using this here, the facilities that this offers. The matplotlib will offer other facilities which we can look at later. But for my code, I just want to draw some graphs and I know that I only need access to this, which is effectively a subset of the functionality that you can find in this library. So I'm not importing all of the facilities of the library. I'm just importing the ones that I want to use in my code. And down here, you can see that I've got a list of all the X values and a list of all the Y values. And on this line, I'm plotting the X and the Y coordinates, and you can see I'm using dot notation and I'm using this PLT, which is what I've put here as an abbreviation. Now, when this executes, you will get a graph. Now, depending on the editor you've got, the graph will appear. But if it doesn't appear, you have to show it 
which is what this line is doing, plt.show, it'll show the plot that this line was responsible for generating. Now I'll come back to see what this program does in a moment, but the key is, having pip installed this, if I want to use it in my program, I have to put this line in. However, if you go away now and write your code using this line, and then type this slot in, but you have forgotten to pip install this, your program won't work. It'll crash. It'll say, I don't know what this is. What you're trying to do here. In other words, this line will only work when you've previously pip installed the library, so the libraries on your computer, having been brought across from the web, from an appropriate location on the web, that frankly we don't need to worry about at this stage of our understanding of this library. Okay, this is the program that we've just been considering and you can see I'm importing on this line. Here I'm setting up the X and Y coordinates. This is drawing the plot and this is going to show the plot drawn. And when this program executes, what you're going to see is the following. And you can see I have a straight line graph and I've arranged for the X and Y coordinate positions shown here as these Python lists to give me this straight line graph. Let's consider some of the X and Y coordinates. And the first thing I'm going to do is just to choose at random one of the X coordinates. And you can see here that I'm going to be choosing the 2. Now that 2 will appear on the graph as shown by this dotted line. And of course if we look to the corresponding y value which is shown here is this 5 then I'm going to show the dotted line here and of course what we have with the 2 5 coordinate position we have a dot appearing here which I'm showing in yellow if I continue and look at another coordinate position and that coordinate position is 3 and 7 and you look to the graph we can see we have the dotted lines showing us the 3 and the 7 and you can see the yellow dot appearing and that's the coordinate position. Now clearly I could show you some other dotted lines and other dots and you will see that they all appear on this straight line graph. Now if we consider what Python has done using the imported library we can see that on this line it's using the plot facility associated with matplotlib and you can look and you can see x and y are passed into this plot method and it draws the graph now it won't draw those dotted lines and the yellow dot that's what i've added on for the purpose of this video but if you look at the whole line responsible for plotting the graph it is shown here and you can see it's plt dot plot and we're passing in x and y which are the lists we've already discussed but i think i should point out this here this is plt now the reason plt is there is because when i imported the library that's drawing this graph you can see i have said let's call it plt now that's an abbreviation that makes it easier for me when I'm typing up my code and this abbreviation tends to be used by nearly all Python programmers. So to enable me to draw the graph, to use the facilities offered by this library, you have to, as you can see here, import the library. But specifically, I'm importing only a subset of this library and if you consider here you can see I'm using the Python core language and here I'm using the facilities offered by matplotlib but particularly offered by the pyplot subset of matplotlib. So what we need to do now is to summarize what we need to do in order to use the pyplot subset of matplotlib in our python programs and the first thing we need to consider is this we have to pip install matplotlib now this is outside of python in the command prompt and that will go off bring 
the necessary files across the internet and install it on your computer. And when you then write your code, what you have to do, as you can see here, you're responsible for ensuring that you type this in as well, which is saying, I wish to use the facilities offered by this library after you make sure you've pip installed it. Please consider subscribing to the channel and click the bell to ensure you get an update every time I upload a video. Maybe you would like to consider supporting the development of these free videos via Patreon. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter and also check out the supporting website.